Hello, I'm Elaine and this is Weekend Wildling Channel. A little bit about me, I have a desk job. My desk is in my bedroom within my small flat in London. And I have a huge love of nature, huge love of camping and I don't do it enough. I book myself off two weeks from work. I'm taking my guitar to, uh, to play around the fire pit and I'm gonna do some cooking while I'm there. It's November and tomorrow I'm gonna to be leaving, taking you with me. Come along with me, Elaine, on some weekend wildland trips. This is the first one. I have a little remote control, say bye. I'll be able to get set up and have my first evening with the curry that I made last night and then if I wake up tomorrow and it's raining it's fine it's drizzle it's light rain and, and, and breeze wind that kind of thing but um, I'm sure we'll get some sunshine welcome to my little home my tent which needs sorting out there's crap in it. I'm in the woods. <laughs> it's windy, you can probably hear the wind. I'm very happy. I've cried on the way here because I was like so happy to be in my happy face. But um, yeah, I'm going to sort my stuff out in the morning because it's a mess. I'm just going to put my windbreaker on, sit around the fire, and um, play some music. I'm sat here with a log because it's going to go on that fire, which I will show you. Um, and I have one beer, one beer, and there's no fridge of beers to go and get another one, so moderation is good. And um, I'm, I made a bit of curry yesterday, and I'm going to have that. But I'm so happy. I'm in a canopy of, of trees. I don't know what it's going to be like in the morning, but... It looked, I mean, it was dusk when I, when I got here. It's so beautiful. I've got my fire pit that, um, that I bought, very cheap. I'm gonna sit and play for a little while longer and um, enjoy my first night. I've got two weeks of this. Rain is gonna stop a little bit of the outside fun, um, but there's no reason why I can't do this inside my tent some evening. Thank you for coming on this trip with me. It's funny because I love doing these things on my own, but also I'm quite a sociable person. So I get to be social with you. I get to have um, a reason, a reason to talk to myself. I'm not talking to myself, I'm talking to you. But also to, to have this time for myself. But yeah, it's been great. Show me a smile then Don't be unhappy Can't remember when I Last saw Last saw you laughing All the push And they shove And they bend to your will I'll keep them play in a long time outside. <laughs> I'm very happy, very happy. You 
you know, I'm so glad that I love this. To know what makes me happy, I know how lucky I am to know that. And the fact that I can come away like this, I love that I can entertain myself, that I can find joy without relying on others, so that I can have that time for myself and then be with my friends and family without needing anything from them. I need things from them, I need love and everything. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm self-sufficient when it comes to what makes me happy. And I can be happier around other people, but I can be happy, so happy in moments like this. I'm just heating up my curry, listening to weird contemporary classical music, because that's my jam. <laughs> and uh, it's just, the first night and I know the rain is coming so I'm making the most of tonight but gratitude eh but I have a hobby that is so big because it's out in the big world and it's being surrounded by trees and fire and nature and just lucky and for you who are watching you must be like me you must like this too and you don't have to just watch you can do it it's easy and it brings so much happiness and joy <laughs> So I've just got back from the Prince of Wales pub near Scare Beach and uh, I had the best time. Day one, officially day one, I arrived yesterday. So today's my first full day. It rained, I stayed in my tent or around the campsite, but it's good because I've been organizing myself and figuring out what I need near me and what, in, what can go in the car and getting things so I know where they are for every time I move. I can just do the same thing. I didn't leave until four. I went to the Prince of Wales pub because it was recommended by Mary, who owns this campsite. This campsite is amazing. It's a lovely, lovely place. Mary is lovely. So I went to the pub and I uh, sat in a room. There was a couple of people in there. There was a fire and then gradually more people arrived. No one arrives together, they arrive separate and it's a real community pub, a very local pub and everyone's just chatting in a room with a roaring fire, small pokey room, old furniture. It's 600 year old pub and I didn't realize that it's a very famous pub um, for being apparently the most haunted pub in Wales, but steeped in history. It used to be a mortuary for shipwrecked mariners. It was the town hall. It's a courtroom, a coroner's place. I got so many tips from people. Everyone in the room is just talking like you're in somebody's living room. It's four pound a pint. I got talking to people. Um, Ken, who is a sailor, who was a sailor for many, many years on ships, who's traveled the world. And I met Joe, who's a police officer. I chatted to Joe for quite a long time. And apparently the room is only in the last, I don't know how many years, has allowed women in it, because it was a very male room. They told me about the a group that used to meet upstairs called the Nonsensicals. There'd be people playing fiddles. There'd be people telling stories. It was very theatrical. And that's all died out now, so nobody does it anymore. But they were talking so fondly about those times. That, and the, and it, the Nonsensicals had started up just after the war. But there were so many characters in there and everyone was so welcoming. And when I left, this lovely couple called Michael and Sean were one of many people giving me tips on great places to go on my travels and they offered me a free trout fish that they had bartered with another local they had five or six of them so they gave me a fish i said i didn't have anything to barter but they said the company had been had been enough and they also gave me 
uh, they got from the pub some, some aluminium foil and some lemons for me to cook it on, on my fire pit. And then they threw in six eggs that were all covered in hay and um, fresh from the, from the chickens. And it was all a gift, a massive hug and everybody leaving, saying goodbye and saying, come back round here again. And just so lovely. And I wanted to be brave and go out and just talk to people. So I just sat with my pint and just started talking and that's what happened. And I'm really glad that I was brave on day one and not brave on the last couple of days because I would only have wished I'd done it earlier. But um, yeah, let me show you, let me show you the fish. I've put some salt and pepper on it and the lemons inside. I'm just prepping up this and then I'll put the, the grill on it and cook it. I've got it in its parcel and it's uh, on the fire. So yeah, I'm gonna have that with, um, with some rice and um, just, I can't believe it. I'm already just having the best time. And lucky for me, I'm like, I'm in the woods and I'm not afraid. I feel like people tell me I should be, but isn't it nice not to be afraid? What's gonna happen to me? There's no such thing as ghosts. And if there is, they're only bad in the movies. <laughs> I was in the most haunted pub in Wales. And I did say to them, I hope, I hope one of the ghosts doesn't get in my passenger seat and come back with me. <laughs> So yeah, I ghost in the in the passenger seat of my car. Maybe there's enough fish for both of us, but oh, just incredible. Oh, and um, before I went in the pub, on my way to the pub, I got a message from my friend who I met in 2007 in China, and uh, we hit it off straight away. Just travel in our blood and just, yeah, just, critical thinkers, interested in the world, and uh, we've been friends ever since. And he's a, a digital nomad, and uh, he's traveling in Argentina at the moment, so I do visit him sometimes. We went to El Hierro, one of the Canary Islands together, this uh, last year. I can just join him wherever he is, which is amazing. But he messaged me to say that he was in a Welsh village in Argentina, and he didn't know I was in Wales, and I replied, oh my God, I'm in Wales. I'm in a Welsh village in Wales. And when I spoke to the people in the pub about this, they, they said, yeah, they've been to, one of them had been to a Welsh village in, um, in Patagonia. They speak Welsh, just an incredible coincidence. And actually when I got, went into the pub, Sean of the, of the couple that gave me the fish, she said, do I know you? Have we met before? And I said, no, I think I've got one of those faces, but I said, maybe in a previous life. And she said, yeah, maybe, but she's the one who gave me a big hug when I left. And um, I just feel so close to Wales. I really do. I keep coming back here. Like I cried in the car on the way here. It's just something about it. Maybe it's my spiritual home, but I do want to buy here. I do want to buy here. I'm tied to the city for my job, but who knows? Who knows what the future brings? I'm going to really enjoy this fish. So I'm in a very beautiful place in the Clag Gok farm, I think that's what it's called. And I've got my car all packed up, ready to go to uh, Gower. And I'm stuck in the mud. <laughs> I've tried for 45 minutes in a pair of yellow rubber gloves, trying to dig my wheels out and uh, get some traction and uh, I'm now it's a beautiful day and it's raining all the time so I'm sad to be missing this beautiful day but I am headed up here on the instructions of Mary the farmer here to uh, find her mother <laughs> and their tractor and they're gonna dig me out um, Washed my hair in cold water this morning. Invigorating. And uh, I see the tractor ahead, and uh, maybe I'll get a ride in the tractor back to my car. Isn't it funny how what could be seen as a disaster? 
becomes a fun joyride on the on the front of a tractor. <laughs> Everyone in Wales is just so nice and so helpful. Mary's mother was um, was fixing a fence, and she stopped it to come and help me. <laughs>